Hi. The world sucks right now, doesn't it? Wouldn't you say? I think it does. But I lived. I lived, bitch. I am here. I'm alive. I know it's been a little while. Just, just a little while. Um, but right after I made my update video, I mentioned that my roommate had gastroenteritis at that time. And she was very sick. And then, that night after I made my update video, I was blowing chunks, man. It was bad. I was very sick. I was very sick. And I was sick for a good week. So, the whole, I'm gonna put out a new video this week, kind of like, got thrown out. Because I'm not filming while I feel like shit. So, that didn't happen. And then I've been recovering, and it's just one thing after another. I was sick, and then I was sick again, because why not? At least it's not during Pride Month. Getting that over with before Pride Month. You may have noticed something different. I cut my hair. There's still tiny bits of teal left in it, but for the most part, it's all gone. I shaved the sides first. And I was like, it looks like shit. So I didn't know what to do with it. So I just, I just fucking took it off. I took off all the teal. That was my measurement. I was like, where's the teal? Take it off. I did it myself. This is all myself. I haven't been to a hairdresser since before the pandemic. So this is what's left. And my curly guy method thing is kind of on hold until this grows out a little bit. I'd like it to grow out a little bit. But this is the new me. I even have a slit in my eyebrow. I am queering it up. I've been on tea for a year, guys. I've been on tea for a year, guys. I'm excited. I'm like, I've been waiting for this. For a year. I've been waiting for it for a year. I've also been waiting for my two years and my three years and my four years. And it's just like so amazing that it's finally happened. And I feel like a new man. And it's just, it's great. Um, it's a big milestone. We celebrated. We went out, outside, had a good time. Um, it was fun and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling accomplished. I'm feeling like I really did something. I really did something there. I really did something. I, uh, survived this long. Uh, so I'm just going to get into it. I, I wanted this to be kind of like an update, but also a recap. So I'm going through every month and just giving you the highlights and I'm going to try to put the little cards up, the cards are over here, right? The, card, the cards are here. I'm going to try to put cards up for every video uh, from each month and I'm also going to leave timestamps, chapters if I can so that you can jump to things, but I've never done that before so I don't know how that works. I'll figure it out. But um. I'm, this is, this is going to be a little long. This is going to be li just a little long, um, cause I got a lot to talk about, but I'm going to share with you my voice update, my face update, all the different updates, um, at the end of the video. So watch out for that long ass intro. Okay. Let's just get into it. Month number one. I was started on testosterone cypionate, cypionate, um, 0.25 milliliters of 200 milligrams per milliliter. Uh, it was the cheapest option. I wanted to go on the gel, but insurance didn't cover it and it was going to be like $300 a month and I wasn't going to do that. So the cypionate ended up being like $60 a month, uh, with out an RX, good RX coupon, so I went with that. Um, and I thought that insurance didn't cover it. That was a lie. 
um, I ended up just getting sweatier and smellier. That was my number one very first like side effect. My very first effect was I just stank like a teenage boy. So I had to shower more and I did end up showering more and it helped a lot, but it was, it was, it was May. It's, it's getting hotter now. And as things progressed, I got sweatier and smellier because it was hot. Um, but that was, that was it. I was really looking forward to more effects, but I did not get them yet. Month number two, I found out I was allergic to my testosterone. I found out I was allergic to the carrier oil um, of testosterone cypionate. So they started me on testosterone enanthate and I have had no issues. I haven't had any itching. I haven't had any red bumps ever since that. Everything has been great. So turns out I am not in fact allergic to sesame oil, which is nice because I eat it too. <laughs> but um, I got really hungry. I got really hungry, like ravenous. And I knew that that was going to be one of the effects. So I was like, God damn it. This is not what I need right now. I'm trying to work up to getting top surgery. And I just, I don't need to be hungry so much, you know? And that was a little annoying. Uh, I also started getting erections and a little bit of lower growth. It was just starting. And I was very excited about that because it's one of the things that I was the most anticipatory for. Um, and I didn't notice it myself. I didn't notice it myself, but my roommate started noticing my voice was dropping just a little bit. And that made me very happy. I still, I couldn't hear it in my head, but she said it was, so I believed her. Month number three, I was given a blood test. I went to see my endocrinologist for the first time since being prescribed and they increased my testosterone from 0.25 milliliters to 0.4 milliliters, which is 80 milligrams. And that was once a week intramuscular, like it was before. Um, I do it in my leg. Uh, and it's been like that since. And even though my T levels have fluctuated a little bit since then, they haven't adjusted my dosage. So it's been fine so far. I was less hungry. I was less hungry. It just kind of went back to normal levels. Uh, I really broke out in my face, like a lot. Like I'm, I'm still breaking out in my face, you know, like I'm still, it's, it's not as bad. Like it was really bad. I was doing a new skincare routine. I was trying my best. I was washing my face every day. I don't even do that now anymore. I tried, it just, it doesn't happen every night. But like I was doing everything right and it's still, did that to me. So it was also on my chest. It was on my chest. It was kind of on my arms. It was, it was more acne than I had had on my body than when I was a teenager. I had worse acne as a teenager on my face, but it was, it was different. I was just sweatier everywhere. Everything was covered in sweat. It was gross. Um, my, also my, uh, my voice started dropping a little bit more. I couldn't do little cutesy voices. Like when you're talking to a baby and your voice goes all the way up there, I can't, I stopped being able to do that and I still can't do that. Um, but I've kind of adjusted since then to doing the cutesy voices, but like half an octave down and it still works. Also, my mustache started coming in that month. Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh, I, uh, I'm very proud of it. It started coming in just a little bit. I was the only one who noticed it. I was just like, Gina, Gina, there's a mustache. I have a mustache. And she was just like, I don't see anything. I'm like, no, it's there. Um, but I was right. I noticed it first. I was right. It's there. Month number four. I got smellier. I got sweatier. It was hot. It makes sense. It just kept progressing. Also, my erections decreased in frequency. My libido decreased a little bit. My lower growth kind of stagnated. Um, but this is also the month that I got onto a certain level of gabapentin that is supposed to like ruin your sex drive 
and ruin your libido and ruin your sensitivity and all of that. And that definitely happened to me. That was like the month that it hit me. So I'm still on gabapentin. I'm on more than I was at that time, but I think it's getting better. And I'll, I'll mention that later, but I think I'm on the up and up. But for that month, it was very like, well, what, what's wrong? Come on, do something. You know that, you know that, that meme of like the, the stick figure poking something like with a stick, like, come on, do something. Oh, that was me. I was actually getting body hair, like on my legs. It was getting dark. It was getting longer. I was very excited. And uh, there was more stuff coming in on my face. My mustache was getting darker. I was getting fuzzier. You know, I'm still very fuzzy. I'm very fuzzy. Um, not a lot of it is dark, like at least on my face. It's not really dark. There's some dark hairs down here, but that I was just getting fuzzier. I'm a bear soon. And I couldn't sing my favorite songs anymore. You know how frustrating that is? You're so used to having a female range. And so you've got the harmonies, you've got the melodies, you're you're stuck in like, I know what I'm supposed to be singing in this song, especially with the harmonies as a choir person. Like I knew all the harmonies and I was, I was used to being able to do that. And then for the longest time after that, I wasn't able to, and only recently have I gone back to, okay, I can do the harmonies, but an octave lower and that's okay. But for like months and months, I couldn't do anything. And it was really, really frustrating. Month number five, I was dealing with some vaginal atrophy and I noticed it because I was having a very nice time with myself and it just hurt afterwards and I was very upset about it. Like I don't get around to doing stuff with myself that much because of all the psych meds that I take and, and it just ends up being a big ordeal. So I avoid it. But like I was getting vaginal atrophy. It, it's, it makes things painful. Okay. That's what it does. It, it the, the, the lining gets thinner and then it gets annoyed more easily. It gets irritated. And so I was just SOL. I had to take a break. I, it was not fun and I did not enjoy it, but at least I was getting all the body hair. Like it was all coming in. It was everywhere. It was on my arms. It was on my legs. It wasn't that dark yet, but it was getting longer. I could tell that I was, I was getting fuzzier. I was getting fuzzier. It was great. My facial hair, uh, I was getting some stuff under my chin, which uh, is still there. Um, and uh, I was very proud of that. But the only problem is my head hair. My head hair, you guys. Look at that hairline. It is still feminine. Like, my hair was getting thinner. It was falling out. I don't know how much of it was stress and how much of it was the tea but it was sad. I was like, no, I love my hair. I, no one in my family on my mom or my dad's side of the family really went bald. So I don't think I'm going to go bald, but it's just sad. It's sad because I used to have such nice thick hair. Everyone commented on my thick hair and how, oh, everyone wants your hair. It's wonderful. And now it's just like, there's a bald spot in the middle. It's just, it's frustrating. A lot of this stuff, while great, can also be frustrating. So it's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Month number six, I wore a binder for the first time since starting tea. And that was kind of nerve wracking because I think I mentioned in my transitioning while fat video, which is a very old video. And I'd probably like to redo it now that I'm on T. Um, but I talked about how I, I, I don't wear binders. They don't do anything. What is the point of being in pain if I'm not going to pass? Like if it would make me pass, I would do it, but I don't pass. It takes me down from an H to like a C. Like I, I know that fat guys sometimes have a chest, but like, and that's what I want from top surgery. I don't want to be completely fat, flat for top surgery because I'm never going to be skinny and it wouldn't make sense for me. But I, I just, I don't wear binders. 
I don't even, I don't wear sports bras. I don't wear anything because fuck that. But I wore a binder for a Halloween costume and I noticed a little bit of a difference. I looked at myself from the side and I was like, you know, I was wearing a, I was wearing a button up at the time and like, I was like, okay, all right, okay. I, I, I might pass. I didn't. But I might. Um, and I attribute that to fat redistribution. I attribute that to my just my my chest got deflated. It just deflated. And so there's less mass. And I guess I can see a difference normally. I mean, not really. But it's it's something. I might wear a binder again. By the end of the night, it was up in my armpits. Like, GC2B, great binders, but they're not long enough. So I wear, like, the, the compression part is not long enough. So I wear the full tanks. And because it's not long enough, it creeps up. Like, I... it's a crapshoot for the most part. But I did it. And it did something. It did something more than it usually does. The horniness came back for a hot second. So I had been on, you know, back and forth. Uh, and so far it's just been back and forth. It's really what it's like. I'll have months where I do not care. And then I'll have months where I am ravenous. And I don't know what my body is doing most of the time in general. So I just attribute it to being a human being who happens to have a sex drive. Two words. Ass hair. On the ass, in the ass, all over the ass. It was, I have so much ass hair, you guys. It's bad. I mean, it's not bad, but like, it's a lot. And I was told one of the very first things that I would notice is the ass hair. And it took a little bit. But it eventually got there, and it's kind of funny, just because it's like I'm growing a forest in there, and like there's memes about it, like it's 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 relatable to a lot of trans guys, and I think that's kind of a bonding thing. But like it showed up, it really showed up. Month number seven, my face was breaking out so bad, like incredibly um it, I was kind of taking care of it like it wasn't like it, it felt really bad it felt bad they kept showing up it was just very frustrating I also dealt with some compulsive eating and I don't know how much of that was my own battle with disordered eating and what part of that was the testosterone like there's stress and then there's tea making me incredibly hungry. Um, so I'm not entirely certain how much of that was tea, but I would attribute it, attribute some of it to tea. I would. Um, also my voice was just really cracking all the time. Like anything I said, if I had any little bit of emotion in my voice, any little bit of like excitement or anything, it would just, it would crack. And my roommate thought it was hilarious, um, which is, I think it, I think it's kind of cute too, because it's like typical teenage boy shit. But um, I don't know. I thought <sighs> at least it meant something. At least it meant it was changing. It was, it was still dropping. It's, it, it's been dropping. It's continuing to drop. It's gonna continue, I assume. Um, but it was just kind of a, a reminder that, you know, my voice does not sound like it used to. And my body hair was coming in. I was getting a happy trail. That was kind of cute. Um, it was just getting darker and longer. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Like, I, I was getting hairier. And I continue to do so. Month number eight. I was getting a soul patch. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. It's kind of dark. Like I can feel it really much, really a lot, a whole bunch. Um, 
it's gotten darker, but it started month eight. Um, just my face. So much hair on my face. Um, speaking of hair, there's hair on my stomach. Like, it was getting really dark. It was kind of creeping up. It hadn't, hasn't really gotten to my chest yet, but, like, it was getting there. Psyched about that. Um, my testosterone ended up becoming free at the beginning of the year. And I don't know what was up with that. I feel like it should have been free to begin with. But I'm not going to go and pester my insurance about any back payments because I'm paranoid that they're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's not supposed to be free. You're right. Like, I'm not going there. I'm not dealing with that. My, my testosterone was like $30 a month with the enanthate. Like, I, if I don't have to pay that, I'm not going to, you know, I don't have any money. Unfortunately, my chest dysphoria got really bad this month, like really bad. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was, I was sad. I was upset. I was in like emotional pain. It sucked. It really sucked. And while it's better currently, it's, it's still not I still need top surgery. I require top surgery. Give me top surgery. <sighs> I was dealing with a lot that month. Month number nine. My erections were back, but my libido was not. And that was weird. That was very weird. Like, I was not interested in adult fun time. But I was still, like, getting excited about things and it was, it was weird it's a very interesting juxtaposition of your body's functions it was, it was very weird um my voice was getting deeper but it was cracking all the time it was really cracking and my singing voice was terrible it just got worse and only recently has it gotten better but like month nine like i was so upset at like how much I could not sing. Like, I just gave up on singing along. I just mouthed the words. Like, we used to sing in the car all the time, and, like, I just would not do it. I just wouldn't do it. Because what's the point? But, um, that did not last. My chest dysphoria actually died down. Like, I, I don't know if it was therapy. I don't know if it was trying to change my mindset. But, like, my chest dysphoria really died down. In month nine, I, I wish I still had that, that contentedness, that peace. Um, I don't at this moment, but, um, for the most part that month, I didn't really think about my chest. It was just, it was not there. It just wasn't something I thought about. Month number 10, high five. It was boring. It was really boring. It was just more of the same. Everything was happening, just more. It wasn't really anything to write home about. I, uh, I don't know. I, my dysphoria was kind of back, but it was different. Okay, it was different. Because it wasn't just my chest. It was like a whole body thing. Just like, this is wrong. This whole thing is wrong. And... That is not a fun feeling. And I hadn't really had that for a while. I, I, it was usually like individual things, but I, everything was just wrong. I was in, you know, they say like you're in the wrong body. Like that's what it felt like. Like everything was wrong. Even the parts of me that I actually enjoyed, it just felt very kind of dissociating. It was, it was very weird. It, so much of this is weird, you guys. So much of it is just so freaking weird. Month 11. My face. So fuzzy. It's just so fuzzy, you guys. Like, on the sideburns. I wish that the color would go down the way that I can feel it. But it just, it stops where my hair is. And, like, I don't know. One day. One day it'll get there. But, um, my face is just so fuzzy. Like, everywhere. It's just, it's everywhere, you guys. Um... 
my voice was it was getting to the point where it was kind of relaxing and I was able to like explore my lower range. I was able to like be like, okay, I need to not try to sing those high notes because it's literally not possible. Um, why don't I try an octave below? And then sometimes that wasn't even low enough. Like what the fuck? What the fuck you guys? I, um, I might be a bass. I might end up being a bass. I'm not sure. Uh, right now I'm a baritone, but I think I might end up being a bass. Uh, but it was it was fun to actually be able to sing something like whether it's the har the low harmony, an octave below, or just an octave below. It it was something. I was able to sing something, which was very. It was nice. I had been sex repulsed for a couple months, uh, but this kind of lightened up. It lightened up. I didn't really do anything about it uh, in month 11, but it was like, okay, okay, I can see I'm interested in things. Like, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, but it was nice to have an alignment with what my body is feeling and what my brain is feeling, you know? That was nice, because it's weird being sex repulsed and also getting turned on by things. It's weird. Surprisingly enough, my dysphoria took a break. Like, it just, like, took a vacation. Go. Leave. Like, I was focused on what was good. What was positive. What I liked about my changes. I liked my voice. I liked my facial hair. I liked, you know, the body hair. I liked... Some of the fat redistribution, which is actually like decreased my hips. And I was focused on that and it was very nice. It was, um, it was relieving. It was relaxing, uh, to not have that constant awful dysphoria. Um, I'm not in a peaceful place at this point, but I was for a little bit and that was very nice. Month 12, one year. <sighs> I, um, there's, there's just, it's a lot of, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good things. I, um, I started singing more. I've been singing in the shower. I've been singing in the car. Um, I've been singing along this stuff when we play music in the house and like, it doesn't sound awful. I've been trying to utilize my low voice, you know, like what the fuck was that? How can you believe I can do that? Like, what the fuck? But, um... <laughs> I've been uh, utilizing that and it's been working and <sighs> feels good, feels organic. It's not getting that much hotter. It's really not. It's hit maybe a hundred, maybe a couple times. I don't know. I don't go outside, but like it was, I know it was a hundred a couple of days. Um, and yet I am just sweating my balls off, my proverbial balls off. And like, it, it sucks. I mean, when I was sick, when I had gastroenteritis, I was doing a lot of sweating. It was very uncomfortable. And I just, I didn't shower for like five days. And like, by the end of it, I was rank. And I've never felt more disgusting in my life. I, <laughs> it was so bad. Dude. Testosterone will make you sweat, especially if you live in Phoenix. Like, I just... Beware. You know how I keep talking about wanting chest hair? Well, it's creeping up there. It's getting there, you guys. It, <laughs> I don't mean to be feeling myself. But, like, I... I... I've noticed just in between my tits, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of dark hair and like, it's like, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. It's getting there. Um, that was very nice. It was very nice to see. Also, um, I am now fully interested in adult fun time again. Uh, I had some me time. It was nice. It was the gabapentin and the anti- psychotics and the antidepressants and all of that shit still fuck with me but I was 
it, it was nice. I, I wasn't like completely desensitized and I wasn't completely like annoyed with the whole ordeal, which I have been before. Um, but I checked on my lower growth because even when I'm in the shower, it's kind of hard to like judge size. Um, but I was able to really check up on it and I would say it's bigger than last time, uh, which is always positive. Uh, it's not that big. It's really not that big. Um, I want to say, oh my God, it's like two centimeters. It's probably not. It's probably not. It's probably like a centimeter, but before it was like nothing. So that's progress. I might get a mirror down there. I really might. I might go all the way, get a mirror down there, check up on it. Um, I will keep you guys posted on that. Um, but, uh, for the most part, it's, it's progressing. That's all you can hope for. I don't know if you can tell, but I shaved my neck beard. I mean, it's not really a neck beard. It's like a chin beard. Like right here. Right, right, right here. It was getting really long. Like, you know how I've been able to like pull on it and it's gotten like really long. You can see it like all the way down here. Like it, I just, I was sick of it. It was brushing up against my button ups when I was wearing button ups and like it was feeling weird and I was just like, no. So I got my clippers out. I put it on like the lowest guard besides like nothing. And I just, I shaved, I shaved you guys. I shaved. Like I'm not shaving the mustache. I'm proud of the mustache and the mustache does not bother me, but this was bothering me. So now I'm kind of spiky, a little spiky. I slept, uh, I slept, um, the other night, uh, with no shirt on and I just, I had this up against my chest. I was like, do I have hair? Do I have hair that's like poking me? Yes, you do. You do have hair that's poking you. It's on your face. So like, that was very weird. I had to like ignore that while I tried to sleep, which I imagine is going to be a thing that happens for the rest of my life. When I shave, it's going to be spiky and it's going to touch my chest. So, um, I'm glad I was able to do that for the first time. It was, it was a milestone. I was very excited about that. Uh, that's all that has happened in these last, uh, 12 months, except for a couple things that are just general that I want to talk about. Oh my God, you guys, this video is so long. <laughs> this video is so long. I'm sorry. <sighs> um, anyway, uh, I know you guys have asked about my period, have asked, when did it stop? When did all this happen? Because because that's a big thing that happens when you're on testosterone is it should hopefully stop your period. But I have an IUD. I have had an IUD since 2015. This month I was due for a replacement. I was very sick. I did not get it done. I would like to get it done next month before the Supreme Court comes back. Um, but I... Don't know when I'm gonna have the opportunity to do that. So let's just cross our fingers that I can get it replaced. Um, but I haven't had a period since 2015, not a single one. And it's glorious. Like it was so good for my dysphoria to not have a period. I haven't, I have, there are no pads in the house because every person who lives here does not get a period because I mean, my roommate has an IUD too. So it's the same IUD and it works great for her and it's so nice, but I cannot give you any kind of estimation on when I would have lost my period. I have had some uterine cramps lately that I've talked about and that's the only thing down there going on that I can report back on. And even that could be, Hey, you ran out of hormones in your IUD. You need to get it replaced. You know, it's like when your pacemaker needs a battery change, and it starts buzzing in your chest, like maybe that's what it is. Who knows? I did hit a few capillaries while I've been injecting. And the first time it freaked me the fuck out. It freaked me out because it happened twice in a row. And I was like, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. But um, I talked with my endocrinologist and he was just like, look, you're doing it in your thigh the odds of hitting a vein and like fucking yourself up are very slim. And if you did, you would start coughing immediately. You would know. Um, so if you hit a capillary on the way in and it starts like bleeding 
not profusely, but like a lot, uh, when you pull the needle out, it, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Um, and so the first two times it happened, I freaked out and then I got used to it and it's happened maybe like twice since. It's not a big deal. I one time got blood on the bathroom carpet and uh, that was kind of annoying, but it doesn't hurt me. I mean, this last time I think I hit a capillary and it didn't bleed because I can feel it. I can feel the bruise. It's very annoying. Like I got a bruise in there and I haven't had this before. Anyway, it, I'm fine. Hitting capillaries is perfectly normal. It's going to happen and you're going to be fine. There was one time I accidentally gave myself the wrong dose of testosterone. I accidentally gave myself 0.3 instead of 0.4 milliliters. I just measured to the wrong line and I was kind of freaked out about it. I was like, oh no, I ruined it. But nothing happened. Like nothing. There was no side effects. There was no, there was nothing. And I'm, I'm fine. I lived. My T levels are normal. Uh, when I had gastroenteritis, the worst day was on a Monday and I inject on Mondays and I could not give myself an injection on Monday. It was impossible. I was either in bed or on the toilet. Like there was no opportunity. I, it was one of the worst sicknesses I've ever had. And I felt so bad. I was like, oh God, it's, it's, am I going to have to wait like a week in order to give myself my shot? What's going to happen? Am I going to feel even more like crap? But no, I was able to fortify. And then on Tuesday, I gave myself my shot. It was fine. No side effects. That was like two weeks ago. And I have not noticed anything different. Um, there was no extra fatigue. There was no extra agitation. There was no extra acne. It was one day off and I was fine. I still have tea injection anxiety every single week. It's been a year and I'm still, oh God, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go upstairs and do this. <sighs> I sometimes had a couple panic attacks and this is recently, this is in the last few months. I had a couple panic attacks and my roommate was there for most of them and like was there to like help me calm me down like rationalize things with me she was like well what do you think you're gonna mess up what are you afraid of and then i would talk about it and she'd be like well what are the odds that you're gonna do that you're so like meticulous about this that you're not gonna be like you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck it up and i have yet to fuck it up um except for that one time when i measured out 0.3 instead of 0.4 and now i am very very like meticulous about that. I'm just like, I have to make sure it's on the right line and that has never happened again. So I'm doing fine, but I'm, I've still got anxiety about it and that's normal. And it may never go away just because I have an anxiety disorder, you know, but at least it's not to the point where I can't give myself my own shot. I know there are some people who can't even give themselves their own shot and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. You, whatever you need to get yourself testosterone, you do it. But I don't think anyone else in this house is going to give me a testosterone shot. So it's gotta be me and I can do it. I never lost the ability to cry. I never had any trouble crying. I cry on a regular basis. Uh, I will cry again <laughs> very soon, probably. Um, but that could just be the mental illness, you know, I have so many, but, um, there's no like inability to like get the tears out. There's no resistance. There's no like inability to get the emotion going. There's none of that. And it kind of sucks. I was kind of hoping that like, I wouldn't be so emotional, but I also kind of don't want to lose the ability to cry because I feel like I would be like backed up and I would like the tear the tears don't go back in like that I would I would feel repressed um so I'm glad that I can cry I really am it's time for some comparisons let's go all right my voice comparison absolutely phenomenal like Listen to this.
This is my voice one day on T. This is my voice three months on T. This is my voice four months on T. This is my voice five months on T. This is my voice six months on T. This is my voice eight months on T. This is my voice one year on T. Holy shit, you guys. Holy shit. That was me? That was me. That 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 little mousy toned little little bitch. Like <laughs> that was me. I sounded like that. In my old videos, I sounded like that. What the fuck? Like and now like the voice that I used in my last comparison little segment was um my natural voice where I talk like this. Usually when I'm around the house, I will talk like this. Um, just cause it's, it's how my voice wants to come out. But when I'm filming, I talk like this and I really, I have, I've tried to control it. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Um, but that, that is a big comparison. That is a big difference. That is such a big difference. And I'm very proud of it. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I just, you know, I think I might end up being a base. Maybe. Face comparison. Look at me. That was then. And this is now. And I would say the biggest thing is my face got fatter. Now, I can tell you why. And it's not entirely because of the tea. Um, but... Other than that, I would say my eyebrows got darker and my nose might have gotten a little bigger. I don't know. I've always had kind of a big nose. Um, my facial hair, obviously, my mustache, my soul patch, my neck beard, which is not really there anymore. Um, but I I can definitely see a difference. Can you, can you see a difference? Like, I can definitely see a difference. But I don't think it's the most dramatic thing. I wish I had better comparison with like jawline. I, I don't have a jawline. I, I, I don't have one. But it, it uh, uh, you know, I'm learning to love myself, you guys. I'm learning to, I, I'll get there, y'all. I'll get there. But, um, there's definitely been a difference. And, uh, that's good. I'm glad there's a difference. I'm glad I don't look exactly the same because that would suck. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. That's it. This video is going to be an hour of raw footage. I'm hoping it can be less than that for y'all. Now I am really going to try to get out four videos next month because it's pride month. It's pride month and I want to do gay shit. Like, I want to do just, I just want to do gay shit. I always want to do gay shit. But, like, I, I'm going to try. I'm going to, I'm an attempt will be made. I'm feeling so much better than I have this last month. I feel like a person. I mean, a disabled person, but I still feel like a person. And I'm going to do my best. Definitely more than one video. It, God willing. More than one video. Um, but... I just want to let you guys know that I am doing better. I'm feeling better. I'm going to be better. It's going to be okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me on my journey. If you enjoy my content, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. I do my best to put out new videos regularly. I hope you have a fantastic week, a fantastic Pride Month coming up. It's going to be great. I will see you guys next time. Mwah.